Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, so you know me, since I clearly don't have any sort of good judgment, um, I end up spending uh, quite a bit of time online um, in, uh, involved in a number of different uh, baseball discussions. One that comes up uh, often is a discussion about the uh, value of players like uh, Joey Gallio. Uh, if you don't know about uh, Joey Gallio, who plays for the uh, Minnesota Twins, um, uh, he is very well known for uh, having uh, the ability to um, hit home runs and hit long line drives um, without really having the ability to, you know, uh, like hit for average. Um, and so you have a player there who has the uh, lifetime batting average of 197 um, and yet who uh, has had 41, 40 home run seasons, a 38 home run season in 2021 with two different teams. Um, and this season, uh, despite hitting 178, has uh, 21 home runs for the Minnesota Twins. So this is interesting to me, and it's interesting to me not just uh, for reasons of uh, memeing or like, you know, uh, talking about how awful he is and all this other stuff. Um, it's also not just interesting for uh, reasons of talking about his fielding abilities and um, how he was apparently once a good fielder. Though as I look at his statistics right now, I'm starting to think apparently he was at one point in time this year. He doesn't look like he's uh, such a great fielder. We want to talk, though, about... Um, sort of that mentality and that type of hitting. So, I mean, I'm an old school guy kind of by heart, right? I um, have, believe it or not, um, some actually quite a bit of respect for uh, modern baseball statistics, but um, I'm not very content with the idea of sticking everything in a uh, spreadsheet and just reading what it says on the top, right? I think that we need to look closer at statistics, think about what they're telling us, and start asking difficult questions instead of just believing what people say and pretending that we understand things that we don't really understand. Um, because of that, I'm interested in looking into this type of player, the Joey Gallio type player. And I've asked myself, is there a way that we can figure out whether somebody um, is more Joey Gallio than Gallio? And uh, after doing a little bit of searching online, I discovered that there is a uh, statistic known as home runs per hit. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this here. And, uh, oh, look, my, my head is still there. That means that OBS is um, working uh, in our favor today. This is going to be a little bit small for you, so we'll, uh, we'll increase this a little bit here, uh, probably to 120% zoom. Um, and uh, we'll make it a little bit wider so that we can uh, actually read it. Hopefully that's readable on your screen. If you're using a uh, tablet or a phone, then um, I do pity you, but I will put the link to this in the description. So what is home runs per hit? It's the number of home runs divided by the number of plates a player records over a defined period, and we spelled records wrong. Okay, so that's all we need to know, right? It's uh, home runs divided by hits. And what this will tell you is what, like how one-dimensional a player's game is or is not when it comes to hitting home runs. Now, you know as well as I know, right, the players don't go up and say, I'm just going to try to hit a home run today, right? What this really is going to tell you, it's, it's not like a great statistic to use because um, if you barely miss a home run but you get a base hit, you might get a double or even a triple out of it. We should be considering those as well. My guess is that those who use um, FX statistics might be able to come up with a statistic that's a little bit better that takes a lot more things to consideration. But the problem with that is that you can't go look at the past of baseball history and say, oh, well, look, this player is very comparable, right? So um, this side, Jeff's bespoke baseball stats is cool. Good career home runs per hit. So uh, to find uh, whatever it is, uh, the uh, uh, top, uh, I'm guessing, 75th percentile would be 0 0.117. Having something bad that's in like the uh, lower quartile would be 0 0.024. That's for career, for season, 0 0.27 versus 0 0.023. So, I mean, these are basically the same. It's very, very similar. That gives us an idea of kind of what good and what bad looks like, right? I think that this is better than um, like manipulating the statistic. Like I've seen, like I saw in a very in a uh, old uh, Sabre paper I was reading earlier this morning, um, manipulating the statistics so that it says something different because you think that people don't understand it. Whatever, just use the number, tell us what it is, we'll do all the manipulation that we need. This is the interesting part right here, right? So here are the records. Um, the records, as you can see, I mean, just by looking at the career list are all players who played very, very recently. Uh, Mark McGuire, of course, is going to be on this list. That's no surprise. My surprise, though, is that Barry Bonds is not on here. But Bonds does, does show up here on the best season home runs per hit uh, for his 2001 season. Now, I don't 
I didn't watch much of his 2001 season. I paid a lot of attention to the 2003 season. A little story time for you. I was running a paper route in 2003, not an actual like paper boy paper route, right? I was like 19 years old. Instead, I was working for the company that printed uh, newspapers in Utah, and I would take copies of both the Salt Lake Tribune and the Desert News over to the houses of paper boys and leave them on the doorstep, and then they would wake up in the morning and uh, take the papers and then distribute them. So I was doing this at like one or in the morning or something like that midnight one in the morning and because i was doing that i could tune in to knbr um, out of san francisco and i could hear actually pretty clear signal because of the way that uh, radio waves work especially in the west i could listen to the midnight baseball rebroadcast of that day's giants game so i listened to a lot of barry bonds playing in 2003 um, and uh, am very well aware of the percentage of hits that he got that were home runs it was a lot of fun to uh, be in the truck uh, listening to that. I enjoyed that a lot. In fact, I have fond memories of it. The best uh, season home runs per hit, of course, belongs to Carlos Zambrano, which tells you what uh, how, how, what this statistic is worth You know, for his 2006 season. And then this best season average home runs per hit is uh, right on over here. We can see that... Um, <laughs> Pre-generational, the last generation. I hate this. Give me, give me numbers, and then we can look at the uh, the uh, generational uh, distribution. I mean, whatever. I'm sure that if I like, you know, hang around on uh, on uh, our man in Glendale side, Jeff's side, I could probably figure out what he means by these names, right? Um, so, but what you can see here is that over time, that home runs per hit for career and for season has gradually um, increased, right? And that makes sense if you know about, uh, you know, the uh, current uh, model of playing, which they call the three true out model. That, by the way, was a meme from Usenet, apparently. I was reading about that the other day, and it's kind of funny how that's, you know, turned into uh, what everybody refers to. Uh, Be careful what you say in your message boards. The reason, though, why I'm telling you all of this is not just to bore you, is to talk about this guy, Ryan Schimpf. You ever hear of Ryan Schimpf? Look at this. He's at the leader. He's the leader in terms of season average home runs per hit. He's the leader in terms of the best seasons home run per hit, and he's the leader in terms of best career home runs per hit. I don't know how he has a season average that's that high. Oh, who's Ryan Schimpf, right? Ryan Schimpf. Here is Ryan Schimpf. Have you ever heard of him? I haven't. He played for the Padres for two years, 2016, 2017. He wasn't a full-time player. He was a part-time player, and then had five games with the Angels in 2018. Right. Okay. So, like, who cares? Who in the world is this guy? Look, I can find him on Twitter. Maybe I'll go and uh, start harassing him. Um, so, when you look at this guy and what his offensive pattern was, is just incredible, right? 2016, he has 89 games, 330 plate appearances, and he hits 20 home runs, right? His batting average is 217, right? But he has a very nice looking slugging percentage. Oh, and look, he was taking walks as well. This is actually pretty good, right? He struck out like crazy, but he was taking quite a few walks, and he had a pretty good on-base percentage as well. 132 OPS plus, right? This guy was a major league caliber player in 2016, no question. I mean, he was coming in, though, at age 28. You have a rookie who starts at age 28. You got some problems, my friend. 2017, he's 29 and plays 53 games again for the Padres, 197 plate appearances, hits 158, which is horrid, but gets 14 home runs, right? 26 hits. 14 of his 26 hits are home runs. I mean, this is like is like a cartoon. And then in 2018, he has five games for the Angels, only seven plate appearances. I mean, he must have been like a pinch hitter in most of these. He has one hit, and it was a home run, right? In his career, he had 87 hits, 35 were home runs. I mean, this guy isn't just like Joey Gallio. This guy's like freaking like the legend uh, version of Joey Gallio. I was reading this just the other day. He went up to 20 in 2016 to the Padres on June 14th, played well. 2017, he had a streak. He started to the season. He was really bad in April, and then he started to homer. He picked his batting average up a little bit um, and then uh, wound up uh, down in the minor leagues, up and down. He was traded three times before the end of the season in the third first week of 2018, he ends up uh, anyway. He ends up with California or with Los Angeles for a little bit of time, eventually, um, and uh, goes over to the Atlanta uh, system. And then, yeah, here we go. He was in Atlanta, went over to Los Angeles. He had not played in a single game for the Braves. He ends up in Los Angeles, and then he um, has uh, five games, and that is the end of his career. Right? You want to see proof? We'll go over and look at his uh, winter league statistics here for you. 
I realize this is all too small. My apologies. We'll make this a little bit larger. And I mean, I'll put a link down below. You can join with me on Twitter in, uh, in harassing the guy. So he was down in Salt Lake for like a very little while, right? Playing a little bit. And uh, once again, we saw him with um, uh, three home runs and 19 hits. So not quite as impressive, right? And then he was over in Hermosillo um, in the uh, Winter League. And then that was it. I mean, I don't know what happened. Did he get injured? Did something happen to him? Like, why did this guy stop playing, right? He was released by the Angels May 22nd, 2018. All right, so he, I mean, played in Salt Lake for a little while. I'm guessing that there was something about his game in uh, Salt Lake that was off, right? I don't know. Um, I mean, probably the fact that he was hitting 178, you know, and the OPS was down, right? But yeah, he's out of baseball. He, he never got another job again and retired. So this guy, um, I mean, he had a 3.4 career war, which, um, I mean, this is less than a season's worth of uh, war. According to what the war mavens, the war mongers tell me, this is uh, actually pretty good war. That means he's above uh, average, or not above average, or above replacement level, even though he really was not quite at a replacement level when you look at what actually happened in his career. I mean, you know, the, uh, the the truth is, and I will give this to you, that, you know, we're dealing with, like, you know, such a low sample size that, like, whatever, you know? Um, his uh, fielding, I'm looking here for, uh, where's our value ratings? Well, maybe he doesn't give value ratings because he barely played at all. Oh, here we go. Player value batting, which is where you have to look for our field, right? His fielding is actually good. He's above average as a fielder, right? So it's not like he came over and was so bad at playing second or third that they're like, we can't deal with this guy. You know, let's never have him do anything again. He somehow played like uh, half the positions in his five games for Los Angeles. I want to see what happened there, actually. That's really interesting. Um, so, yeah, in Los Angeles, he, uh, oh, yeah, look at this. He played, um, he actually played a complete game in one game, played a third base. We'll uh, take a look and see what happened in this game. Uh, so uh, here's our man, Ryan Shrimp, who was hitting uh, ninth in the order, which is amazing for Mr. Hit a home run every time you get a base hit. He actually got a hit. He was one for two, uh, uh, struck out, had two walks, which is not bad. So it's either get a hit or strike out. And uh, did he uh, hit a home run? Yes, he did. He hit a home run. So <laughs> go figure this, right? You get this kid who comes up. This is uh, April 8th. Is this the first game of the season? I don't know. It's not. This is game number 10 of the season. You finally, He finally gets a chance to play, hits ninth, strikes out once, and hits a home run, and then walks twice, and uh, he never starts another game again. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, this is wrong. He did start. He started one more game. The next game he starts against uh, the Rangers. And did he hit a home run in this game? Uh, no, he didn't. Albert Pujols did. Um, Shrimp uh, went 0 for 2 uh, with a strikeout um, and uh, played in left field. Why is he playing in left field, right? He's not really a career left fielder. I mean, did he, like, make an error or something like that? You no, know, no. No putouts, no assists. Uh, we'll talk about this one later, right? So here's an example of a left fielder who didn't have the ball hit to him. The uh, ball was not hit to left field all game. That's a, uh, that's a topic for another video. Anyway, this is uh, starting to drag on a little bit, but, I mean, what's the deal? What's the deal? Why are you playing him in right field, right? You had him play as a pinch runner, right? Second base or third base, that's where he belongs. But, yeah, he had two um, appearances. I'm guessing he was in Salt Lake between them. And then, you know, they didn't like anything about him, so they just got rid of him. Yeah, Shrimp was a pinch runner. Didn't even have an at-bat in this game. Dude, the guy's home run machine. Every hit's a home run. You don't even give him an at-bat. And then um, here in uh, this game, I know I was looking at his uh, fielding and not at um, his uh, hitting. So in this game, he came in as a defensive replacement and didn't get any at-bats. We go take another look here at his game logs at batting, and let's see these games that we've missed. Um, yeah, April 7th. So in April 7th, he had an at-bat as well and struck out. Um, April 9th had two at bats. Um, so yeah, there you have it. Seven plate appearances overall struck out three times. I mean, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand, you know, why this guy was so bad that they had to uh, release him. So, um, this is sort of my question for you, whoever you are. Um, and I know that uh, today's blog post was also about, uh, Ryan Shrimp and, uh, uh, has said a lot of the uh, same things I just told you. My uh, qu uh, challenge for you, though, is can you tell me what in the world happened to this guy and why suddenly we decided that he was not major league caliber? I mean, so we'll look at this really quick, right? 
here's Joey Gallio, right? So uh, let's uh, get this thing uh, jacked up again. And so here we go. We got we got the Gallio, you know, car up on the uh, the car jack, right? We're gonna go under the hood. Um, and what you see here is very, very similar, right? So you're looking at what he has uh, 521 hits of those 198 are home runs, right? I mean, we know already because we looked at this stat that Shrimp's like career total like makes Gallio look like you know nothing, right? But like this guy Joey Gallio playing the same time with the same type of results, right? 2017 he hits 209, right? That's not that much different. 41 home runs. Well, what does Shrimp have? Uh, let's go back here and look. You know, Shrimp in 2016 had, uh, you know, 20 home runs, you know, playing half the season. So it's, it's basically like the same type of player, right? Joey Gallio ends up not just being a regular player, but he ends up being an all-star. And you can come back to me and you can say, oh, well, his defense, right? And yeah, I know his R field looks good um, around that period of time, although he was actually not so great at R field as an all-star, but whatever. I get it. He's a good fielder for an outfielder. Shrimp played at a better, like, what we would consider to be a harder defensive position, second base and third base, and did well, right? I mean, this guy wasn't like a gold glove winner, but he's doing well. He's doing good enough. He has a positive fielding war, right? He's, he's doing just fine, right? So, I mean, clearly fielding is not the problem here, right? I don't know. What is it? What makes Joey Gallio like all-star, two-time all-star player, you know, um, and uh, a guy who's making, what is he making now, you know, um, uh, here we go. A guy who's making $11 million a year after getting that wonderful $10 million a year for the Yankees to do nothing. Making $11 million a year for the Twins, who are playing well, I know that. Um, you know, why is it that Joey Gallio is able to make the big money and um, is able to uh, be, you know, the uh, target of all of our Twitter memes, and yet Ryan Shrimp doesn't get a chance. He's out of baseball, right? Been out of baseball for years. I don't know. Anyway, if you watch this, Ryan, I uh, tagged you on Twitter um, you know, uh, sorry for any harassment you get because of this. Um, but, uh, I really like to know, man, because like, I mean, if this type of game is the future, if, if these offensive statistics are marking the future of baseball, then why is Mr. Home Run not playing in the game? I don't understand it. If you understand it, please tell me this time. I actually really do want to know. Anyway, I'll talk with you guys later. Hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.